Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade module 4, lesson 5, slope intercept form. After this lesson, you need to be able to write equations in the form of y equals mx plus b when given a table, graph, or verbal description. Let's learn slope intercept form of a line. Non proportional linear relationships can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. This is called slope intercept form. It should look really close to what we just did with our direct variation equation, which is just the first part of that, y equals mx. The difference here is instead, this one has a value added to the end, which actually is just shifting the line. Instead of it going through 0, 0, it either shifted it up a little bit or down a little bit, depending on where it starts and what the context is. So in this format of the line, m is still the slope or the unit rate or the constant of variation, whatever you want to call it. Our new value is b. b is the y-intercept. It's the y-coordinate of the point where it crosses the y-axis. So we can see it right here on our graph. If we were to draw a line through, how high up is it? It's 1 above, so the y-intercept would be 1. And we would write that here at 1. The slope is still found the same as before, doing the ratio of the rise to the run. Let's look at how we come up with our equation, similar to what we did with our direct variation equation. So this time, instead of it going through the point 0, 0, it goes through the point 0, b, which is our y-intercept. So if I plug that in, b was the y-coordinate, 0 was our x-coordinate. Now I can start to solve and simplify. y minus b. That didn't change. I can't combine those. They're not the same variable. But x minus 0 is just x. If I want to start to get y by itself, my first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x. Times x divided by x is just 1. So I'm left with y minus b equals m times x. And then to get y by itself, I would add b to both sides. Minus b plus b would make 0. So I'm left with y equals mx plus b. That is my slope intercept equation, and I just was able to figure it out using the slope formula. And just like before, you are not necessarily going to need to come up with the formula in this manner, but it is helpful to see where it comes from. Example one identify slopes and y intercepts. Identify the slope and y intercept of the graph of the equation y equals two thirds x minus four. To identify the slope and the y intercept of the equation, write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. If we're looking at what they're giving us, we're already left with y equals, here's our m, x, plus a number. Well, we have minus a number here as subtraction, but remember, subtracting is just the same as adding the opposite. So we can add negative 4 instead of subtracting positive 4. By doing this, we can see m and we can see b. So the slope of our graph, which was m, is 2 thirds and the y-intercept is going to be negative 4. Going forward, you might recognize right away that they actually did just tell us what the y-intercept was without putting it with the plus sign. We can still see m is 2 thirds, but our y-intercept, if you see a minus a number, the y-intercept is just going to be a negative value. So 2 thirds x minus 4, minus 4 is your y-intercept. Check your understanding. Identify the slope and y-intercept from the equation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said the slope was negative 2 fifths and the y-intercept was negative 1. Our slope is right here. That is your m and your y-intercept. You could either write that it was plus negative 1, so it's that, or you can just see the minus 1 right here. b there is your y-intercept. Example 2, write equations in slope-intercept form. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form with a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of negative 4. If we're given like this, it's helpful to remember what our slope-intercept form is. y equals mx plus b. Slope is m, so let's put a negative 3 in its place. Tells us right there the slope was negative 3. y-intercept is b, so if we're plugging in b, we can put negative 4. Then, instead of having two symbols here, adding a negative, that's the same as subtracting 
we would want to simplify this a little bit so we can say y equals negative 3x minus 4. And again, I can just see that y-intercept there. At the end, it's negative 4. So our overall equation would be y equals negative 3x minus 4. Check your understanding. Write the equation in slope-intercept form with the given slope and y-intercept. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have put y equals 5x minus 7. So slope plus 5, that's where our m goes. And y-intercept is here at the end. b was minus 7. So 5x minus 7. Let's learn. Slope-intercept form of a line. You can write an equation in slope-intercept form of a non-proportional linear relationship from a graph using these steps. First, find the location where it crosses the y-axis to determine the y-intercept. So here I can see the graph is crossing the y-axis right there. Here's my y-axis. That's where my y-intercept is going to be. Then, anywhere on the line, I'm going to use the ratio of the rise to the run, as we've been doing, to find the slope. So here they chose to go here and here for rise to run. And finally, we can take those two values, plug them into our slope-intercept form, and come up with our answer. So in this case, we have a slope, it went up 3 over 2, and the y-intercept crossed the y-axis at negative 1. So if I plug those values in, I would have y equals 3 over 2x minus 1. Here was my slope, here was my y-intercept. Example 3, write equations in slope-intercept form. Write the equation in slope-intercept form for the graph shown. So if we take our steps, first let's find the y-intercept. Our line crosses the y-axis at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 units up. So the y-intercept is 4. It is positive 4 in this case. Then let's find the slope. So they're saying from this point we can go down 1 over 2, or really we can just go to any other point on the line. If I wanted to go down 2 and over 4, remember our slope triangles, we would still have the same ratio of our rise to our run. So it went down 1 over 2, that is our slope. And if you remember from a previous lesson, we could tell the slope should be negative because of the fact that the line is going downward when we're looking at it from left to right. So we should make sure our slope was negative, which here we said it was. Last, let's write our equation. So we found that our y-intercept was 4. We can plug that in. We found that our slope was negative 1 half. We can plug that in. Negative 1 half was our slope for m and positive 4 was our y-intercept for b. So notice here, this is our first time seeing a positive y-intercept. This is where the plus stays. Plus 4, that together I can see that the y-intercept was up 4 units, positive 4. So our overall equation is y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Check your understanding. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the graph below. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said y equals negative 3x plus 2. So our y-intercept is right there. Here's our y-axis. How many spaces up? One, two spaces up. There's our plus 2. That's our b value. And our ratio for rise to run, we had to go down 3 units over 1. So down 3 over 1, which is just negative 3, plugged in for m. And then we have the y and the x that are always there. So y equals negative 3x plus 2. Let's learn. Write equations in slope-intercept form from verbal descriptions. When an equation in slope-intercept form applies to a real-world situation, the slope represents the rate of change, which we've seen in previous lessons, but the y-intercept represents the initial value. So we're starting somewhere, sometimes it might be zero, but in these contexts, it's usually something else other than zero. You might also see it, depending on the context, as like an extra fee or something that you only pay one time as you're going. So here, bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants on earth. Suppose a bamboo seedling is five centimeters tall and grows at a rate of 6.5 centimeters a day. So it started at five, not at zero, it started at five, but it's still growing six and a half. 
So as we're going through this, if we're imagining the graph, instead of it starting at zero, it starts at five, and then it starts to grow. So let's find the slope in y-intercept. The slope is how much is it changing each time. It's growing 6.5 centimeters every one day. So if we were just to simplify that, we'd have 6.5. The y-intercept, where is it going to cross or where does it start? It started at 5. So our equation then for this bamboo would be y equals 6.5x plus 5. And if I was going the opposite way, I can see that this thing started at 5 centimeters tall and is growing 6.5 each time. Example 4. Write equations in slope-intercept form. Student Council is selling t-shirts during Spirit Week. It costs $20 for the design and $5 to print each shirt. Write the equation in slope-intercept form to represent the total cost y for printing any number of shirts x. So here's a real situation that might actually happen. If we wanted to be able to predict how much money it's going to cost, we can create an equation and then tell people the cost, or this company could tell student council the cost that they're going to need to pay depending on how many shirts they order. So it costs $20 for the design. So the designer gets $20 for their work on designing it. And then the company is going to charge $5 for one shirt, $10 for another shirt, $15 for three shirts, and so on. They're $5 each. So let's find the slope in the y-intercept. The slope is our rate of change or the cost that it's going for each shirt. It was $5 for every shirt that they ordered. So $5 to print each shirt. We see the word each here. That's usually an indication that that is what has the rate with it. So $5 for each. That's our slope, our M. Our y-intercept is the initial cost. And in this case, that's for the design. They're only going to charge for the design one time. There's only one design. It was $20. So that's your y-intercept. Even if they just order one shirt, they still have to pay for the design, so it's $20 more. The slope would be $5. The y-intercept would be $20. Meaning, if we were writing this into an equation, we could plug in 5 for the slope and 20 for our y-intercept. Again, this is going to be how much it costs for each t-shirts, $5 per t-shirt plus $20 for the design, which they're only paying once. So the equation that they could use for any number of shirts would be y equals 5x plus 20. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and write an equation for it in slope-intercept form. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. The equation you should have got is y equals 15x plus 30. Here, it's a little more obvious. It says she started out with 30, and she's adding 15 per week. So $15 each week, and she started our y-intercept there with 30. So each week a change of 15 started at 30. y equals 15x plus 30. Let's learn. Write equations in slope-intercept form from tables. You can write an equation that represents a non-proportional linear relationship in slope-intercept form from a table of values. So our first process, finding the slope here, is going to be the same that we've done in previous lessons. How much is it changing in the y value divided by how much is it changing in the x value? So in this case, it went up 12 for every 2 seconds. So as y went up 12, x went up 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the slope or rate of change in this table is 6. 6 feet every 1 second. Here's where it's a little different in a table. When we're looking for the y-intercept, or the initial value here, we need to find the value when x equals 0. Sometimes it's given to you, but sometimes it's not. So please look for when x equals 0. In this case, we can see that it's right here. So what is it when x equals 0? it was 10. So the y-intercept is 10. Plugging those values in, y equals 6x plus 10. Please be careful, especially when you're figuring out the y-intercept. There are times when they won't give it to you, so I'm going to use my black and pretend that we can't see this here. Sometimes you're going to be given tables that do not have zero included. If you come across a situation like that, you might have to think about working your pattern backwards so we went 6, 4, 2. The next one would be 0. 
what would the y value be at that time? So you need to figure out when x equals zero, what is the y value? That's your y-intercept, not necessarily the first value that's given to you. Example five, write equations in slope-intercept form. Amanda's reading a novel for her language arts class. The table shows the number of pages that Amanda has left after a certain number of hours she spent reading. Write the equation in slope-intercept form that represents the data in the table. So here's the number of hours she spent reading and the number of pages that she has left. So it was 360, then two hours later, she's at 280, then four hours later, she was at 200, after six hours, she's at 120, and so on. So what is our rate of change or our slope? This time from 360 to 280, it went down 80 pages. So she's read 80 pages, but the number of pages she has left went down by 80. It took her two hours to do that. So how many pages is she reading in each hour? We want to find the unit rate for our slope. Negative 80 divided by 2 is the same as negative 40 over 1. So the slope of this table here would be negative 40. She's reading 40 pages per hour, but her total number of pages left is going down 40 each hour. Next, let's find the y-intercept. So we're looking for when x is 0, which again happens to be right there. When x was 0, she has 360 pages left. So that must mean there's 360 pages in the book since she hasn't read any of it yet. So that's our initial value or our y-intercept. Last, let's plug those in. Our slope was negative 40 and our y-intercept was 360. So again, I can kind of double check. We're starting at 360. That was correct. And it's going down 40 each time. That's what I wanted it to say. So our overall equation for this data table is y equals negative 40x plus 360. Check your understanding. Write the equation in slope-intercept form that represents this table. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said y equals negative 3x plus 3. Each time it's going down 3, so down 3 again. Compared to when this is doing it, it is going one space. So every one more second, now I can do my ratio. My change in y was negative 3. My change in x was 1. That's just negative 3. So that's my slope. And for my y-intercept, I want to find when x equals 0. That's right here. It starts at positive 3. That's my y-intercept. Notice here they gave us 1 before. I do not want to use that. I want when x equals 0. So pay close attention to which value you are choosing, especially in a table.